Hello and welcome back into End on a Make. It's been way too long since I last made a video, but I'm getting married in November, um, which means a lot of wedding planning, a lot of getting ready to move, um, and it's just been crazy. But I wanted to hop on here and talk a little bit because the new season is starting. Um, I'm hoping once I am settled in and married and all of that fun stuff, I'll be able to post a little bit more consistently as well, because I think this is going to be a really good NBA season. But uh, what I want to start with, uh, with this first video back, is I want to talk about the Suns. And I want to talk about the Suns deciding to not sign DeAndre Ayton to a contract extension before the season started. He um, was coming up on his rookie extension. He's one of only like three players from his draft class that have not been locked in with an extension, which are him, Colin Sexton in Cleveland, who's been rumored in a ton of bed. Ben Simmons trades, all sorts of stuff, and Marvin Bagley. And if you've heard anything about Marvin Bagley with the Kings, it's probably pretty clear why they didn't come to an extension there. That situation is just wild. But I wanted to start with talking about Aiton and the Suns because the Suns are, are such a popular team to still compete and to still potentially make it back to the finals after coming up short last year. So it's weird that they would go, you know, with this strategy and with this thought of, of potentially upsetting one of their key players. Um, and that's something that I think about a lot. Like, I always err on the side of, like, man, this is really going to disrupt the chemistry. Like, I wonder how, you know, how do you as a player, when you know you've overperformed, how do you react when people around you are getting contracts and you aren't? Is it a slight? Do you take it as, like, a, a, a skepticism to your ability and a lot of what I've heard is kind of the team just wants Aiton to prove that last year wasn't a fluke and that that's going to be how he plays going forward. And, you know, that's a fair assessment, I guess. But when he's the number one overall pick that you took three years ago, it, I mean, you had to have known what you were getting into. Like, if you weren't sure if he would be consistent, you had to know that before you picked him. It's not like that would be a new trait to develop. Um... And it's just, it's odd. It's such an odd thing. The Suns spent $253 million in contracts this offseason for Chris Paul, Landry Shamit, and Mikhail Bridges. And Landry Shamit hadn't even played a game yet for the team. He was acquired in a trade with the Nets. So you're locking in this player that you don't know how he's going to fit, but you're not sure if you want to give DeAndre Ayton, who was an absolute star in the playoffs this last year and helped them in that run. Really what happened is, you know, he was the only center that they had with with Dario Saric going down, which is a crazy thing to say. It really hurt their depth, and he eventually had to just try to be the center for all 48 minutes. And when Giannis is playing like that, no one is going to stop him, basically. And so it's tough. It's tough because... You would think that now that means, okay, the Suns might look to trade him to a team that will sign him, or maybe the Suns want to hope he doesn't play as well and they can get him on a better deal, or, you know, who knows. I kind of think that, like, once you, you break off those talks and, like, that story is out there, kind of like the damage is done. Um, and it's really funny, too. I was talking with a friend of mine about this and about if, you know, did the Suns make the right move, basically which is what, you know, everybody's saying when it comes to that story. And I don't think they did. I understand why they made the move, and I know that Robert Sarver has a history of being cheap, but I think for the Suns, Aiton is such a fit that you have to overpay a bit and keep him there because he fits with that team. And what Chris Paul did alongside him kind of really unlocked his capabilities as an offensive player, and he continued to develop on defense as well. And, like, that's what you're paying. You're paying, you know, that future production. And when you see that trajectory with, you know, a Chris Paul who, you know, you just extended for four more years, you're hoping that you're going to have what you need to maximize the four years with Chris Paul and the team around. And a strong rim-running center like Aiton is perfect in the pick-and-roll with Chris Paul. So I'm surprised that they wouldn't want to lock him in. And another thing that comes to mind to this too is the fact that there's no way that these contracts weren't signed without running it by the rest of the team and like the like heavy hitters on the team 
So I know they probably said, hey, Chris, hey, Devin, hey, what do you think about signing DeAndre Ayton to a max deal? And they probably said, eh, yeah, no. But if, like, they were really like, we need DeAndre Ayton, I'm sure he would have been signed. And so I think that's part of what makes me think that there's going to be, like, a bit of a disruption in that chemistry of that team this year. And the chemistry of the Suns was one of the, you know, they were one of the most consistent and best teams in the league last year. And it was because they genuinely looked like they liked each other. It wasn't just like a team trying to gel. It wasn't a team trying to, you know, get used to and tolerate each other like Philly or like one of those other teams. Like they genuinely looked like they loved playing with Chris Paul and learning from him. And they looked like they loved playing together. So I think it's a little risky to um, potentially threaten that chemistry. And for the Suns, you know, it's tough because the trade value for DeAndre Ayton, if that was the route they wanted to go, is hard to quantify. Like, it's really tough to find teams that would be like, what we need right now is a big center that can just get in the paint. And like, because so many teams are going for that, you know, we need to shoot threes, we need to space, we need to do all that. Like, they're just trying to shoot jumpers and it's tough. I think, like, there was only, like, one or two teams I could come up with that would be good fits for him. But even then, it's like, what are you sending back? Like, what what would Phoenix want in a trade? They'd probably want, you know, uh, close to a star player, a high pick or two, and, you know, the compensation that you would want for a star player. But they're not paying him like a star player, so teams know that that leverage isn't there. And it's just, it's a whole weird situation and I'll be really interested to see what happens and how it goes. I think Aiden is a perfect fit on that team, which is why I probably would have overspent and locked him in just to keep that everything in that core intact. I know, you know, some decisions sometimes have to be made and I know how much they value Mikhail Bridges as a three and D type of wing and like the way he's developed has been super encouraging. So I understand wanting to prioritize that, but I think it sends a weird message to him, to Aiton, to not be able to, you know, close on a deal. And I think it'll definitely bleed into the season at some point because it's like, there's no way they make that decision without running it by everyone. I don't know. I just can't get past that. I just really think it's going to be a problem. And I don't know if that just says more about me and what I would be like in a professional team because I would absolutely take it personally. I would absolutely be like, what? You're going to pay someone who has never stepped foot in this locker room $43 million and you're not even going to entertain paying me? Like, I would be motivated to go out there and play absolutely out of my mind. And maybe that's what's going to happen. Um, we can only hope because the Suns were a ton of fun to watch last year. I really hope that they can continue to have that type of success and that growth because I like a lot of players on this team, including DeAndre Ayton. So hopefully this doesn't disrupt everything too much. They're able to just focus on the task at hand. And then, you know, who knows, maybe he plays even better and really puts it to the Suns to where they're like, we have to pay him. It's just interesting because, you know, who knows what the market would be in trades? Who knows what teams value that center position? And then the last thing really too is like, where does he rank as a top center? Because that position is so hard to quantify. Like, DeAndre Ayton is probably better all around than Jared Allen, right? But Jared Allen just signed a $100 million deal with the Cavs. But DeAndre Ayton isn't as impact a center as, like, Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid. And depending on how you value him, maybe Rudy Gobert even. So, like, he's not in that upper echelon. And I think the, the litmus test that my friend and I kind of landed on is um, Bam Adebayo. You figure, do you think DeAndre Ayton is better than Bam Adebayo? And I think they're pretty similar. Um, Bam Adebayo gives you a little bit more as a playmaker and a little bit more as like a versatile defender as opposed to just like sheer interior defense. But I think the, the ceiling that Ayton gives a team and the ceiling that Bam gives a team could be pretty close if you like sit down and split the hairs. But that's about where I think you kind of start to see that like, drop off where you're like okay I really don't know you know who I would rather have on this team um and that's you know that's that's what I have that's what I think about it I think they might regret not paying him I think it could disrupt the chemistry I think they're a very talented team but 
I'm just I'm fascinated to see what happens. Um, if you think that they made a mistake, please let me know in the comments. If you don't, if you like the move to make him kind of prove it again, let me know that too. Um, I would love to hear from Suns fans on this because I think it is weird because he is such a big part of the team and a big part of the success they had last year. So I would love to hear uh, your thoughts. Um, thank you for watching, and I will be back soon.